Arzu Qadi talking about women's health in Afghanistan. She is also one of the volunteers for the campaign and she studies public service interpreting in Middlesex University. Please come on stage. Thank you very much. Hello everyone and welcome. Um, my name is, is Arzu Kadiri. I'm part of the campaign, European Campaign for Human Rights in Afghanistan. I will be giving a speech about women's health in Afghanistan. Women in Afghanistan have an extraordinary high risk of dying during pregnancy and childbirth and they have the highest maternal mortality rate in the world. Prenatal care, maternal health care facilities and trained health personnel are virtually non-existent in large parts of the country, contributing to a very high percentage of preventable maternal and child deaths. Besides the lack of access to and quality of health services, other factors such as the lack of adequate food, shelter and clean water, low marriage, high fertility rate and lack of spacing of childbirth contribute to the extremely poor health of Afghanistani women. One in six women will die from complications during pregnancy or childbirth. Compare this number to one in 3,500 in the United States and one in 29,000 in Sweden. War-torn Afghanistan has been left without a functional healthcare system. There's a drastic shortage of doctors, nurses and midwives. Today, only 14% of Afghanistani women receive skilled medical attention during pregnancy or childbirth. Death by internal bleeding or obstructed labor is a very real threat. Most women have never seen a doctor and only a few have access to contraception. The root causes of the alarming health indicators in Afghanistan are poverty and the three decades of war, lack of rule of law that sought economic and social progress and lead to the destruction of livelihoods and high levels of disability. This situation has had a particularly negative impact on the health and mortality of women and children. But there does not appear to be any evidence of deliberate gender-based discrimination within the health sector, the exception being the Taliban insisting on separate medical facilities for males and females, which increase the de facto differences in service provision to men and women. However, factors such as the prevailing poverty and lack of the health facilities and trained staff, along with the predominant tribal cultural attitudes related to poor norms, have had a devastating effect on women's reproductive health. A study in rural areas of Afghanistan concludes that the extraordinarily high number of deaths of women during pregnancy and childbirth are largely preventable. They are a direct consequence of the very young marriage age for women and girls. According to UNIFEM, 54% of girls under the age of 18 are married. Poor health, nutrition, too frequent childbearing and virtually no access to gynecological and obstetrical services. Small anemic mothers with undeveloped pelvic bones are at greater risk of obstructed birth with devastating consequences for both mother and baby. And they may not withstand pregnancy or the usual blood loss during delivery. Other studies similarly point out that 40% of children of child death are due to the preventable causes of diarrhea and acute respiratory diseases. <coughs> There are no national figures for average marriage age for girls, but in this study it was found to be the age of 15, while 54% are married by the time they become 18 years old. In the health sector, a picture of largely underserviced rural population is apparent. In 1976 to 1977, there were a total of 176 government licensed trained nurse midwives in the whole of Afghanistan, and of these were 150 in Kabul province alone. Today, there is about one basic health center for every 40,000 people. 19 districts have no health facilities at all. 
In 38% of the rural districts countrywide, the majority of people have no access to even the most rudimentary forms of health care. Therefore, patients tend to wait until their health become severe before they travel to medical centers. The uneven geographical distribution of health facilities is made even worse by the uneven distribution of female health workers. In 2002, after the collapse of the Taliban, there was one female nurse per 59,000 people in most provinces. More than half of all hospitals in Afghanistan are located in Kabul and therefore serve only about one-fifth of the entire population. According to the World Health Organization, approximately 3,700 of the 3,900 physicians and 600 of the 990 midwives work in Kabul, leaving the remainder of the country with few trained healthcare professionals. In fact, it was recently estimated that a trained healthcare provider attended fewer than 8% of deliveries countrywide, and there is one doctor per 1,000 population in Kabul, whereas there is only one per 10,000 population in districts. In the case of rural health facilities, which are fortunate enough to have a medical officer, he or she may only have limited medical education completed decades ago. The number of doctors plus the 7,000 medical students may exceed the number of trained community health workers in the country, which means that the primary health pyramid has been stood on its head, with a focus on curative care, where with notions of public health are poorly developed. The congruence of poverty conflict and prevailing gender norms has also had other adverse effects of the health of women and men. The extreme anti-woman policies of the Taliban regime from the mid-1990s to 2001 and the years of conflict have, for example, increased women's risk of mental diseases. For example, a study of maternal mortality in Afghanistan points out that large percentage of women suffer from major depression or other mental health problems related to trauma and or suffering of losses in their lives. Evidence from America Mondial a German-based international organization supporting women in war and crisis situations reports that a Herat hospital last year recorded 160 cases of attempted suicide among girls and women between the age 12 and 50. This is widely recognized by aid workers as being the underestimation of the problem due to reporting bias in favor of urban areas. Nutritional deprivation stemming from food insecurity and issues of occupational health are some of the other issues of concern. The UNICEF Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey re reported 14% of children as being severely underweight and 25% as severely stunted, although gender-specific data is not available. In 2002, UNICEF and the Center for Disease Control conducted a child nutritional assessment in Parvan, covering 507 households where chronic malnutrition was reported for 62% of boys and 54% for girls, while prevalence of acute malnutrition was 67% for both. Finally, specific work-related problems affect women and men differently. For instance, Girls who work at carpet looms from an early age face problems of neurological and eye-related problems due to the constant high concentration required. Other evidence on the health effects of conflict and poverty is lacking, and this is a critical area for further research. Afghanistan's health indicators are among the worst in the world, and particularly when it comes to child and women's reproductive health. It's under five mortality rate of 257, per 1,000 live births, infant mortality rate of 165 per 1,000 live births, an estimated maternal mortality rate of 16 per 1,000 live births. Also, there is a rate of chronic malnutrition causing moderate or severe stunting is around 50%. There are very high rates of disability due to polio, cerebral palsy and conflict including landmines. Recent surveys have revealed that almost half of all deaths among women of reproductive age are a result of pregnancy and childbirth. 
and that more than three quarters of these deaths are preventable. Among children, diarrhea, acute respiratory infections, and vaccine preventable illnesses likely account for 60% of death. And among others, tuberculosis results in an estimated 15,000 deaths per year, with 70% of detected cases as being among women. Life expectancy is estimated at 43 years. What we want from this conference? To build a partnership with the Ministry of Health and to find out how we can support them from the UK. To apply for funding to build health centres for women in rural parts of Afghanistan. And to provide scholarships for young people to come and study medical degrees abroad from rural areas of Afghanistan. Finally, we must truly appreciate the very hard work carried out by Dr. Nasimi and helping the new arrivals understand the British values, way of life and culture. His efforts in providing educational activities and helping people integrate into both the Afghanistani community and British society is outstanding. I would therefore like you all to express your thanks to him for his efforts. Thank you for your attention.